with Film Hedge, it's a little bit different. It's um, number one, it's a tech platform. And it's a tech platform that automates uh, a, bit, a portion of uh, film finance that has long been um, time consuming and unpredictable, which is raising capital, uh, in this case, debt capital. Um, and so what we've done is we've uh, streamlined the origination process. You don't need to talk to anyone. You can just go to our website and apply. Uh, we're updating that website constantly. Um, big changes coming soon. And then um, the funding also happens algorithmically. You know, you if, if you move forward through the application process, you get to a page where you know, we, um, we onboard you, we, you know, tell you you've been uh, selected for the loan. Um, and then you would input your information and we would um, wire the capital uh, from, you know, our side and very similar to using, um, you know, some of the small business lending websites that are out there. Uh, we have just uh, applied the process to um, film borrowers. And then we've also applied the same process to film investors. So these are um, other investors who now sit in our, uh, what we call our uh, marketplace. Um, and they let us know how we, uh, uh, what sort of the range of, of deals that they wanna see where, where they wanna see their capital allocated. And all of that help happens algorithmically as well. So end to end, we've automated as much of the film finance process as possible. And the reason for that is um, today, if you were to walk into a bank or a, a film fund or a family office and try to get funding for your film, um, it can take anywhere. I mean, it could take years, but uh, I mean, let's say fastest, it can is going to be two or three months. Uh, average is probably 12, uh, sorry, six months. And so, you know, the um, that's a huge time difference between what we do, which can easily take a couple of days um, to six months waiting for capital for your film, especially if you're already in production and, you know, every day counts. For sure. And every day is money. <laughs> every day exactly. Is money. Exactly. Um, so with Film Hedge, you've already answered a lot of this, but what's the biggest value to filmmakers that Film Hedge presents? I would say the biggest value is actually that we make film investing um, more palatable for the investors. So the, the filmmakers always need capital and they're always looking for ways to get capital and they're always in need of it. You know, it's always warranted, uh, you know, from their vantage point. But what uh, the reason why it's so hard to get people to invest in film is because it's murky. Once you write the check, you don't know what's happening with your money. You don't know uh, when you're going to see returns. You know, you usually don't know if the project's going to be successful or not. So it's just a big wild card. And so people do it for all sorts of reasons that aren't necessarily related to the returns. What we've done on our side is, um, uh, is uh, one, we help educate investors so that they understand the process better. Two, we make it easier for them to um, kind of see end to end what's happening uh, from what when what the borrower does that you know if they need to see the application materials etc that's available uh, we give them real time analytics over what's happening when uh, while a film's being uh, produced uh, and and we can do that because we have visibility into the borrower uh, accounts. Uh, this is something that a lot of modern fintech companies do. They have, you know, uh, either API connections, uh, technology connections to the borrower bank account, where you can see uh, in real time what's happening. Now, that, that doesn't mean that you're watching that account every day. It's just one of those things where we get reports, we get analytics, we get um, all the same information you would get from, say, like a, I don't know, like a, a credit card report, but specifically for uh, that account that's tied to our, um, where we've issued the loan to. Okay. And in knowing that information, as a filmmaker, what would you advise a filmmaker to be sure to include in their package that they present to new investors so that it fits into that as, you know, so that they get an easy yes, so to speak, like, well, it's 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 not so much about the filmmaker giving us the right answer. Like they can't really change the outcome. The uh, the way we look at uh, deals is 
it's uh, it's quantitative. So it's going to be about you know things like how far along the project is from a financial perspective. Uh, what stakeholders are involved? Do you have distribution? Do you have have you applied for tax credits? All these types of things. And what we encourage filmmakers to do, number one, is just be honest and forthcoming with what the the information they're providing. But number two, we encourage them to um, uh, we encourage them to uh, think about these things before they apply and get a, get as far along as they can because that's what's ultimately going to help them. There's not really any shortcuts when it comes to our system. Um, where the shortcuts come in is once you've been approved and how fast we can um, you know, approve you, underwrite the deal, and get you funded. OK. And just thinking if there's anything else filmmakers. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of first time filmmakers that are looking for finance. I mean, what do you see? When you're looking at different projects, you said that you're talking to the lenders and they have different areas that they're looking to invest in. Are there any certain areas that you can mention? Like, are they looking at a certain genre more than others? Are they looking at more uh, female filmmakers or diversity more right now? Are they looking at anything particular more right now? No, it's, um, I mean, uh, what I would say is the way to think about it is it's the same way that um, a real estate lender would look at the portfolio of assets he or she wants to invest in. So it's going to be about things like how long is the term of the loan? What is the risk profile of the borrower? And risk in this case is things like, you know, is the production plan th thorough? Is the... Um, is are the uh, agreements that they've submitted? Are they you know are they all verifiable? Is something missing from from there? So it's it's really all about the the um, the surrounding uh, legal and financial information related to the film. Um, sure, filmmaker uh, film investors have all those sorts of preferences as well, and they might look at the filmmaker on the equity side. But on the debt side, it's really about returns, risk, and um, reliability. And that's where we help them. But what that does is because there's in more investors on the Film Hedge platform, and because their confidence is higher, because they have all this transparency and, and all this uh, visibility into the projects, their confidence goes up. They write bigger checks. There's a bigger pool of capital available and because it's a blind funding process, more people get funded because they can't see those things. And um, it's, uh, you know, I think that's ultimately beneficial to the filmmakers because you'll be funded regardless of whether any of those things might play against you, you know, uh, you know, but um, our, uh, our, our philosophy at Film Hedge is if you make the uh, the lenders, the film, the film investors, comfortable and happy. They will grow. They, they will make more capital available, a uh, bigger pool of capital that can be deployed to more creators. And that's um, how we think about the world at Film Hedge. So you're saying the filmmakers, in order to make them feel more comfortable, they need to be reliable, have a good track record, have their uh, their package as solid as possible, and try to move it forward as much as possible, so that. You can see exactly what they need and then they can make that decision if they want to fund, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I come from uh, the tech world. I've been in tech and venture capital for about a decade and I compare it to how tech startups like Film Hedge have to raise money from venture capitalists. Um, the, the goal isn't to be the, uh, isn't always to be the most likable or to check the most boxes that are, you know, uh, uh, the things that an investor might want to look at, uh, just, just not with all things being equal, just looking at things that are just kind of, you know, um, subjective is to look at the things that are, um, that are objectively good about a company. Like uh, is there revenue? Who is the team? What have they done before? How much, um, you know, how much time has passed since they raised their last round? Does it look like other people are coming in? You know, it's, it's a very, um, well, it's meant to be a very um, uh, um, 
egalitarian process in that anyone can build a good company and therefore anyone can and should be able to raise capital. Now, we know that because humans are involved, that doesn't always happen, but it's uh, because it's a little bit more disciplined, there's a lot more capital going into um, smaller startups. And when you look at the film uh, uh, spectrum, it's, it's, it's almost the opposite. You have all the money at the top, the big $100 million, uh, 30, 50, you know, $150 million movies. Um, and anything below, let's say 50 million or 30 million, it, it's, it's really sparse and really hard to raise money. And one of the reasons is, you know, investors have to look at those projects and they have to say, well, what do I have to go on? And it's usually very little, unless the filmmaker has a track record. And so what we're trying to do at Film Hedge is make it, um, uh, by doing things this way, it makes it easier for, say, a first-time filmmaker to check all these boxes. Now, it doesn't mean it's easy. It's just easier to know what the target is um, that you're trying to hit instead of guessing and, you know, just going out and talking to as many investors as possible. Okay. Sounds like a, the best place for most filmmakers to start is to check out Film Hedge then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, are, we spend a lot of time um, uh, doing what we can to educate people to, to kind of know the space. And that's actually something I encourage a lot of filmmakers who just cold email me. It's like, make sure you really understand this world of film finance. Uh, it's, it's definitely not easy and it's complicated and it's hazy sometimes, but um, you're better equipped as a filmmaker if you know if you know who you're talking to and why you should be talking to them, not everyone who's a film investor is, a, you know, is, is the investor that you need for your film. Um, not every source of capital is the source that you need for your film. Um, so you really have to know and understand how all these things work together. And you can save yourself a lot of time and uh, improve your outcomes because you're eliminating all the time wasted going to the wrong people and places. Know your project. All right. Know your audience. Yeah, know your audience. Know your funder. Um, any other factors uh, you'd want to mention for, you know, that people look into? Basically, any other finance factors that you look for in a film to give you confidence that you're going to receive your ROI? Like, we've already talked about track record of past filmmakers. What about the star pass power and casting? Like, does star power and casting have anything to do with it or built-in fan base when you're looking to build confidence that you're going to get that ROI? Um, all those things matter, but not so much in um, for us because all of that will have been considered before a film even comes to us. Typically, the films that we find uh, have uh, some sort of distributor attached. And that's how distributors make decisions. All the questions that most people ask when they're thinking about film, like all the questions you just asked and things like, uh, when I talk about track record, I'm talking about track record of, um, of returns and kind of putting everything together and making it clear. There's also performance track record, which is something that uh, most uh, kind of older film funds look at. Uh, the reason why those things matter less to us is we're coming in after the, uh, more often than not, we're coming in after someone has made those decisions and decided that all those things are there. And then we see that there's um, sort of a green light um, and, and we uh, make our bet there. Now that's not the only way, at least in our world, a film can get funded. You can also bypass all those things. And if the project is well-structured, we can fund it anyway, because we're, um, you know, we're a debt provider. The, the, the primary thing that we're looking for is that the filmmaker at least clears the, the interest that we're charging, um, it, as opposed to what traditional film investors look for is equity returns, which is the money that the film's going to make for the lifetime of its, of its life. And that means it needs to be really successful in order for them to, for everyone to make money. Um, films can be modestly successful for us and still make money, or they could you know, kind of break even and still make money for us on the debt side. Um, the other thing I'll point out to filmmakers, particularly early ones, is that debt is not your enemy because um, it's often the cheapest capital that you'll get. If you make a successful film and you have a bunch of equity investors, the multiples you're gonna pay out to those investors is gonna dwarf whatever they put in upfront. 
Whereas the debt, you know, once you clear it, it's, it's done. You don't have to worry about paying points forever. You don't have to worry about um, uh, a lot of giving up a lot of capital down the road. It's like you're, once the debt, uh, once the lender is out, you're, you're done. Okay. I mean, just to make it completely basic, essentially a filmmaker would go and it's, it's like applying for a loan but the money comes from different investors versus a bank? Uh, correct. We, we operate like the bank. Yeah. So the money will be paid back from the project to you, to the, well, not you personally, but to, so the money gets paid back to Film Hedge with a percentage uh, int of interest charged. Is there is a specific percentage? Uh, yeah, a percentage uh, range can be uh, anywhere uh, zero to 25%. Okay. Uh, and, and by the way, these are numbers um, that are industry norms. We didn't invent the range of, of interest. Um, so the, I would say the industry average is probably closer to 15%, maybe 10%, depending on the projects. Uh, but it really depends on all those factors I talked about earlier. And so it's, it's until one sees the package, it's, 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 it's hard to kind of tell someone a blanket number. I mean, there's certainly... Uh, institutions out there that are doing, including Film Hedge, that are doing uh, interest rates that are lower than that. Uh, some are doing higher than that, um, but we cap out at 25%. So of course, uh, we want all films to succeed, but if a film failed miserably and they had went to Film Hedge and now they have this debt to Film Hedge, the producers are still gonna have to pay that, that debt even though the film you know, may have tamed. Uh, actually, no, uh, because they uh, we do what's called collateralized lending. And so that means that um, we know where uh, the uh, backs, what we call the backstop is before we provide the loan. It's one of the ways you qualify for the loan. And so if the film comes out and makes no money, there's still things that are there that are going to be paid tax credits. Um, you know, if there's a, a, a di distributor, there's a minimum guarantee. Um, if the person uh, uh, personally collateralized or had did a corporate guarantee, there's still something there that 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 can be um, that can be used to pay the interest and the principal on the loan. And so um, this is not particularly new to um, uh, business. I mean, it exists in manufacturing. It exists in real estate. There's all sorts of uh, lend collateral based lending, uh, but in the film world. Uh, the collateral based lending that does exist is just really slow and and it's really hard to know where to get it um it's very much an in the know kind of you know the people who know know and the people who don't don't and um that's not really good for the industry because um think about how much content is being uh demanded by the streaming platforms how much is being consumed by consumers so it's in everyone's best interest to have more content created by more diverse creators and you do that by growing the uh, market of, of investors and capital that's available to those creators. Uh, because you know, what we don't have as much anymore is big studios funding everyone. It's kind of every man for, for him or her, uh, every person for him or herself now. And so that means the opportunity for lenders like us and uh, investors like, um, like those in our platform is uh, really, really right. Yeah, I think you really hit it right there because it, it's important that the shift has gone from the studios to the in individual creators because now it's not under one control. We are getting more diverse content. We're getting a wider range of creative thought out there into different, not just theaters, but across so many streaming platforms. It gives a lot of yeah, yeah. creative freedom now. Yeah, I agree. And those creators, um, in order to to do what they do, they need capital. And um, in order to get capital, both sides have to be comfortable with each other. So uh, what I found is the hardest part is getting people on the investing lending side comfortable with this space, just with film in general, film and TV in general, because there's been so many uh, uh, issues with film finance throughout its history, and uh, it's considered very risky. And so one way to boost investor confidence is to make it less risky by making it more transparent, making it more efficient, 
and making it more reliable. And those are the things that Foamhedge provides to the market. 